Now I want to move on to the two double slit experiment. So in the last video we looked at a single slit experiment. We looked at the pattern formed when we send particles through a single slit and when we send waves through a single slit. But now let's make things a little bit more interesting um, and now let's consider the double slit experiment. So this is the Young's double slit experiment and first we'll do it for a particle and then we'll do it for a wave. Okay, so for a particle, this is what's going to happen. So you have two slits. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to say that the first one is S1 and the second one is S2. And then you have your detection device on to the other side. So if you're standing here and you start throwing particles, then like I said, some of some of your aims will be very good and you'll land right in the center of the spl uh, slit. But then other times your aim will not be so good and you might land somewhere on the periphery um, like this, okay? Similarly for the second slit, sometimes you will land right in the center and other times you will land somewhere along the sides. But it's important no noticing that this area over here, there, there, there will be no detection because there's a barrier present. So obviously you, you won't really find anything um, in this area. So the intensity plot for this looks something like this. So you have, you have some intensity due to the first slit. Then we have a barrier, so there's no intensity there, and then we have the intensity because of the second slit. So our pattern looks like this for the double slit experiment when there's uh, when you throw particles. Okay, don't confuse this to be a wave pattern. It just shows that you have you have some pattern. So if I if I divide this into two two parts. It's basically like you have one intensity curve for one slit and then you have a second intensity curve for the second slit and then you basically have no intensity over here because there's a barrier. So this is how it would look like if you started throwing particles through the slits. If electrons or light behaved like a particle, then if we started throwing it through a double slit, then we would see this pattern. Okay. Now let's move on and let's see how waves behave. Now here's where things get a little bit more interesting. So we have the same experimental setup. We have S1, we have S2, we have our detection device on to the other side. And let's say we start generating waves. There's many ways you can generate waves, but really that's not, that shouldn't be the focus of our discussion. But if you really want to know, what you can do is you can, like I mentioned previously, you can, you can have a big water bath, you can place the slits in, in, in horizontally, uh, or sorry, vertically in that water bath, and you can dip your finger in and out, creating waves, and then those waves can pass through the slits. If that's hard for you to imagine, then you can also say that we can pass lasers through these two slits and that lasers are also waves so then you would also see a wave pattern emerging okay so here's what's happening so you send a wave through the first slit and you send a wave through the second slit and you get you know you get a wave like this coming out and then you get a wave like this coming out so it turns out that the pattern you will see is, is similar to the one you saw in the single slit for a wave, but it's just that now the maxima and the minimas will be bigger because now instead of having one wave, you're having two waves, okay? So the pattern will look something like this. The amplitudes would be bigger just because of the fact that now you're sending in more waves um, and so then there'd be a greater constructive effect and there would be, of course, that destructive effect as well. So the point here is, that you would see you would see some light fringes over here because that's where the wave is landing but then you would see some dark fringes over here because there's nothing over there right the waves are destructively interacting so they don't even hit that spot similarly um you would see some you would see some light spots here and then you would see some dark spot here um then you would see something that's very very light over here um, and then so on. 
So this is the pattern you would see for waves. Um, and then this is the pattern you would see for particles. So now that we've defined a wave and a particle and we have some experiment that helps us distinguish between the two, now we're going to start doing something interesting. Now we're going to start sending electrons through the single slit and through the, or basically we'll send electrons through the double slit and we'll see what happens, okay? So I want to show you an animation of the double slit experiment just so that, you know, you see it happening and maybe then it'll make a little bit more sense. So here's how the animation looks like. You're sending waves from a source. If you look at the left side, so the leftmost side in this picture, you're sending waves. So as we progress to the right side, we send waves through one slit and then we send it through two slits okay so when we send it through two slits then we see that the waves interact with each other um, and the points where the waves intersect that's where they're destroying each other and then there would be points when the troughs of the waves align and then you would see light spots and the places where the waves um, intersect that's where you would see dark spots okay so Based on this, we basically have an idea of what waves look like and what particles look like. Now let's do something interesting. Let's do the same experiment with electrons. So of course, um, back in the days when they first, when Young came up with this experiment, I think it was in the 1800s, um, technology wasn't very advanced at that time, so I think electrons weren't even discovered then. Um, so you you really couldn't do this experiment, right? Because um, you didn't even know electrons existed, and you couldn't do this experiment with light either because they didn't have the technology. So come 19th century, um, we we were able to send electrons through the double slit and then we were able to see what the nature of electrons was and it was actually very confusing the results were very confusing so if we send an electron through one slit let's see what happens so let's say I have some source of electrons here um, then I have a detector over here and I start sending electrons okay and let's say I, I observe what happens over here. So I start sending electrons and I observe what happens here. And I notice that the pattern looks like that of a particle. Okay, interesting, very nice. So is an electron a particle? Well, scientists said that let's confirm this with the double slit experiment. Um, and then we'll see if it's a particle or a wave, right? So right now our bet is on the fact that electrons are particles. And we really thought of them as particles, I, I'm sure, until now. If you thought of electrons, I'm sure at some point in your life you would have thought them to be like little balls. Um, but let's see what reality tells us. Now let's do the same experiment, but rather than having one slit, we have two slits. So now what happens? So you have a source that's sending out electrons, you have one slit, you have the second slit, and we start sending electrons. So it turns out that we would see we would see an electron land here, maybe then an electron would land here, maybe then it would land here, maybe here, maybe here, um, and so on. And if we did this experiment for let's say 30 minutes, 40 minutes, or an hour, then we would see some pattern emerging. And the pattern we see looks something like this. Okay, so basically it's the same pattern we saw for waves. So that there's some, there's some light spots, okay? And that there are some dark spots. So I'm going to represent the dark spots with this color, with this orange color. And I'm going to spell, uh, and, the, and the blue um, represents the light spots. Okay. So now it's, it's very confusing. How is it that you send something through one slit and it behaves like a particle? And then you send something through the second slit 
or now you send something with two slits and it starts behaving like a wave that's very weird okay so maybe maybe the electrons are interfering with each other okay maybe that's why we're seeing this pattern so then technology developed to such an extent that we could send one electron at a time if we send one electron at a time then obviously that means that the electrons aren't interfering with each other right if we're sending one at a time then they're not interfering with each other but guess what the pattern is after 30 40 50 minutes yes it looks like this so it means that inherently electrons have a wave nature as well so this is um what i mean that this experiment should lay the basic um it should it, it should it this experiment is where we should start off our discussion on quantum mechanics with because it, it has very very interesting results so the question now was is electron a wave or is it a particle what do we do how do we decide this um so the answer was given by someone called de broglie de broglie or de broglie i'm sorry i don't know how to pronounce his name um so he's the guy who came up with the answer to this problem he was actually a prince and he came up with the answer to this problem um but before we discuss broglie's um answer let's discuss some points um, from this double slit experiment so it so remember I said that if we send one electron at a time then what would happen is we would eliminate the chance of interference but the surprising thing is is that you know sometimes the electron would land here and I'm representing by green sometimes it might land here other times it might land here other times it might land here but the thing is we can't predict where it would land so we can never really predict where the electron will land with certainty and that was really confusing to scientists because all of the experiments we do we we know the results of the experiment we usually we can hypothesize and based on theory we can we can guess the results of the experiment for this we can't um, guess the behavior of one electron but we can guess the behavior of a group of electrons okay so that's one perplexing idea that you can't determine position of electron with certainty or confidence what you can do is you can predict it with probabilities you can say that okay there there's there's a very very there's a likely chance there's a there's a there's a bigger chance that the electron will land somewhere here than there is a chance that the electron will land somewhere over here so you can only talk of things in terms of probabilities and that is also one of the very very confusing results of this experiment so what I want to do now is I want to show you um, I want to show you the diff diffraction pattern made by electrons, and I'll do that through an animation. So, this is actually how it looks like when a wave when a laser is sent through the single slit. Um, but I'm actually looking for the electron, um, and here it is. So you know the the electron it it comes and you can predict where it will land on the screen but over time so as you'll see a pattern starts to emerge where you have dark fringes and you have red areas and then you have black areas okay so this is the double slit experiment this is the result of the double slit experiment to sum up things in single slit experiment the electron behaves like a particle. In double slit experiment, the electron behaves like a wave. So what do you do? What's the nature of electrons? We'll discuss this in the next video. Um, and now I want to finish off with one more peculiar behavior about these electrons.
So remember I said that you cannot predict where the electron lands? And in fact, you can't even predict which slit the electron goes through. It's impossible. You can't predict that if an electron will go through this slit or if an electron will go through this slit. So now let's say that you know you're trying to be clever and you 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 place you place your eye onto this slit s2 and you you say that okay i'm going to look at this slit and every time an electron passes by i'm going to know that it went through slit 2 and then i'll know where it lands on the detector and of course if an electron lands um, somewhere that is far away from this second slit, then I can say that it came from the first slit. Okay? Okay, this is, theoretically, it seems very, very convenient that if I started looking at one of the slits, then perhaps I can, I can know where, where, which slit the electron passes through. The peculiar thing here is that once you look at which slit the electron is passing through, it starts behaving like this. Like, like it was going through a single slit. It starts taking on the behavior of a particle. So how is it that the electron knows that you're looking at it and then it takes on particle-like behavior? That is also a very intriguing question that scientists could not figure out. That how is it that if you monitor which slit the electron goes through, it takes on the behavior of a particle? And then if you're not monitoring which slit the electron is going through then it, it then it behaves like a wave so this is something i want you to think about um and then hopefully it, it, it gets you a little bit interested about the weirdness of quantum mechanics and it gives you a desire to study it um, so with this we'll start things off in the next video